Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel, we'll take a look at the Ender 5 S1 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Becoming a member is a great way to support the channel and has a few perks besides just getting your name and lights here. Click the join button to find out more. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at Creality's Ender 5 S1 3D printer. Thanks to Creality for sending this over so I could show it to you. The Ender 5 S1 is the newest addition to the Ender 5 family. Like all Ender 5 printers, it has a cube-style frame. It's not Core XY. Instead, it uses a Cartesian motion system with separate stepper motors for the X, Y, and Z axes. It still has the 220 by 220 millimeter bed of the Ender 5 and the Ender 5 Pro, but it reduces the build height to 280 millimeters. Creality advertises the printer as being capable of printing at 250 millimeters per second. They're using higher than usual acceleration and jerk values, 3,000 millimeters per second acceleration, and 15 millimeters per second for jerk. Now this will let the printer make more abrupt moves and direction changes while printing. To accommodate this, the frame on the Ender 5 S1 gets beefed up a bit, with 2040 aluminum extrusions on the left and right sides of the X and Y module up top. It also gets corner braces at the back of the left and right sides to improve the rigidity of the frame. And there's bracing on the bed platform to provide additional support. The Ender 5 S1 also gets Creality's Sprite Direct Drive Extruder, or the titanium alloy heat break that lets the nozzle reach 300 degrees Celsius. So maybe it's the all-metal Sprite Pro? I'm a little unclear on that. Whichever one it is, it comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. And it uses a reverse Bowden setup, where the Bowden tube is simply a filament guide on the input side of the extruder. The extruder pulls filament through the tube instead of pushing it. In fact, the tube is easily removable from the sprite side, and that makes it very easy to get the filament loaded into the extruder. The hot end's ability to reach 300 degrees Celsius unlocks access to a wider variety of materials. But many of those higher temperature materials will need the printer to be in an enclosure to print successfully. The Sprite extruder on the Ender 5 S1 gets a new metal fan shroud covering the heat sink fan, and that fan only turns on when the hot end is over 50 degrees Celsius. The parts cooling fan is a single 5015 blower mounted at the rear of the tool head, pushing air through a printed duct to cool the model as it's being printed. It has Creality's CR Touch Bed Probe, so it can figure out where the bed is higher or lower and compensate for that. And speaking of the bed, it can reach 110 degrees Celsius. It has a 32-bit mainboard with silent stepper motor drivers, a full-size SD card slot, and a USB Type-C port. And it's powered by a 350-watt Creality-branded power supply. It has a 4.3-inch touchscreen with a dark white-on-black user interface with blue highlights. The interface is divided into four main screens. Home, Print, Prepare, and Settings. The home screen has basic status information. Current temperatures, printing speed multiplier, Z offset, and printing progress. The Print screen allows you to choose a file to print. Like a lot of touchscreen interfaces, you're limited in the number of files that will be shown. If you have more files on the card than will fit in the interface, you won't see all of them in the list. And longer file names are cut off, so you'll have to try to keep your file names short. The Prepare screen lets you move the X, Y, and Z axes, load and unload filament, and set the nozzle and bed temperatures. And the Settings screen lets you adjust the temperature presets for PLA and ABS materials, set the on-screen language, and tram and probe the bed. It also has advanced settings that allow you to enable or disable the filament sensor and manually enter PID tuning values. Now that last thing, it seems to me, is something that nobody is ever going to use. Manually calculating and entering PID values is just not something people want or need to do. What would have been actually useful there would have been automatic PID tuning for the hot end and the bed, 
where the printer would perform heat up and cool down cycles and figure out the best P, I, and D values on its own. Now that I've gone over the specs and briefly touched on the user interface, see what I did there, I want to talk a minute about setting the printer up. The top and bottom of the printer come pre-assembled, so putting it together is pretty easy. You bolt the four uprights to the base and then bolt the top to the uprights. Bolt the bed onto the Z-axis module and then bolt that onto the back of the printer and then add the spool holder and plug all the wires in. Set the input voltage switch on the power supply to match your mains power and then you can turn it on, run through the bed tramming and probing process and print one of the three models from the card as your first print. Total assembly time is in the 30 to 45 minute range. Now this is all covered in the printed quick start guide as well as the PDF guide on the SD card that comes with the printer. Now there's also a really nice 15 minute video on the card that walks through the entire process. Now, one thing though, the PDF guides in the video as well as some other goodies are all contained in a .rar archive file on the card. So you'll have to unarchive that file with a utility that understands .rar files. I think Creality could have made that process simpler by using a regular zip archive. Funny thing though, when you unarchive it, one of the files is a text file and inside that text file there's a list of the folders in the archive and two tips. One, don't extract the files to this card. Oops, too late, didn't see that because this text file was only in the archive file. And two, don't store irrelevant files on the card. So basically, the thing to do is copy that archive file to your computer and extract it there, and then pretty much only use the card for G-code files. Anyway, now that I've gone over the setup, let me show you some of the things that I printed on the Ender 5S1. So my first print was the Rabbit, one of the three ready-to-print files on the card. It printed in 33 minutes. The extreme overhang on the bunny butt seems to indicate that it could have used a little bit slower speed on that part or more cooling. But it's not bad for a half-hour print. Then I printed a Benchy that I sliced using the Windows-only version of Creality Slicer that came with the printer. Using the Ender 5 S1's standard quality 0.2 millimeter print settings, which have a printing speed of 120 millimeters per second, Creality Slicer said it would take one hour, 16 minutes to print. Now the actual print time was only 53 minutes, and it came out pretty good. I think it could have used a little bit more cooling on the steeper overhangs on the bow, but apart from that, I don't see much wrong with it. If I hold it just right though, I can see some ringing artifacts on the surface of the print. Next, I printed the pre-sliced Benchy that came on the SD card. Its print time was 54 minutes, so only a minute longer than the one that I sliced. And the result is pretty much identical. It still needs either more cooling or it needs to print more slowly on the steep overhangs on the bow. And the ringing is still present on the surface. After that, I printed the cat model from the card. Creality forgot to use supports when they sliced it, so one paw didn't come out super good. This printed in one hour, eight minutes. Apart from that issue with the lack of supports though, this one came out really good. Since Creality's documentation that comes with the Ender 5S1 says it can print PLA at up to 250 millimeters per second, I sliced Photist Mint's Yoda figure to print at that speed and I printed it in printed solids green slime glitter Jesse PLA. The only thing I changed was the print speed value in the speed section of the standard quality 0.2 millimeter printing profile. Creality Slicer said it would take 7 hours 14 minutes to print. In reality, it took 3 hours 41 minutes, and frankly, I was quite surprised at how well it turned out for such a fast print, even though Yoda lost his stick partway through the printing process. It seems it was doing great, but then once his hands started printing at the top of it, it got knocked loose. And no, I have no idea how much uh, force it took to do that. When I got back to the printer after it was finished, Yoda's stick was actually behind him. I'm not really sure how it got there, but that's where I found it. Anyway, 3D gloop to the rescue and now it's fine, more or less. The part where it's glooped together is pretty much covered and hidden by Yoda's hands, so when this is on the shelf, that oops isn't really noticeable. Next, I printed McGuybeer's Caladragon using Creality's Red PLA and this was sliced using the standard quality 0.2mm print settings with no changes. 
I even chose Creality's filament profile in Creality Slicer to give this the best chance at showing off what the printer can do when using the software and settings that Creality provides. Creality Slicer said it would take 46 minutes to print and the actual print time was 39 minutes. The result isn't super, but it's not horrible either. Starting at the top, the backs of the antlers are kind of rough, which usually indicates insufficient cooling, and there's a bit of stringing there as well. The surface finish overall is kind of rough, with some bumps in some areas and pitting in others. I guess I expected better using Creality's filament and Creality's slicer with Creality's printer. After that, I wanted to print something that used a lot of the build volume on the printer, so I printed this spiral vase, scaled up to 280 millimeters tall. Creality Slicer said it would take three hours, eight minutes to print, and it finished right at the three hour mark. From about a foot away, it looks fine, but when you get up close to it, you start to see little issues. Some slight imperfections, little bumps on the surface of the print, like on the Caladragon. Okay, time for a quick detour. The Ender 5S1, like some other printers I've used, has an issue printing models sliced in spiral vase mode or spiralized outer contour mode when the power loss recovery feature is active. The power loss recovery feature writes status updates to the SD card every time the Z-axis moves up for the next layer. And that acts like a checkpoint. So if power goes out and then comes back on, the printer sees that checkpoint and knows where to resume the print if you choose to keep going. But on a vase mode print, the Z-axis is constantly moving up because the nozzle is going around in a spiral from the bottom of the model to the top. So the problem is that the updates triggered by moving the Z-axis are so frequent that the printer just doesn't have enough time to keep writing those status updates to the card. It ends up pausing very briefly to catch up, and then it starts printing again and it repeats this over and over. Every time it pauses for like a half second, filament oozes out of the nozzle and you get this regular pattern of bumps around the outside of the print. And so the way to prevent that from happening is to turn off the power loss recovery feature when you want to print something in vase mode. Unfortunately, and also like a lot of printers I've used, there isn't a way to disable power loss recovery from the screen. It's something that has to be done in G-code. I've got a video about how to do that, but the short version is you can add M413S0 to your starting G-code to turn that feature off. But back to this print. The little imperfections are not a result of having power loss recovery turned on because I saw that pausing behavior happening when I first started to print this model, and so I stopped it and re-sliced it with M413S0 in the starting G-code. So I don't know what's causing the issue here. This is a brand new spool of Creality's matte red PLA that I loaded on the printer just before I printed the Caladragon. I was using the standard quality 0.2 millimeter print settings in Creality Slicer for this model with the addition of turning on spiralized outer contour. The print speed is set to 120 millimeters per second overall with the outer wall speed at 80 millimeters per second. Since a vase mode print is nothing but an outer wall, that 80 millimeters per second printing speed is what it was using. So maybe the solution is to just slow that outer wall speed down a bit, maybe 40 or 50 millimeters per second, and I might get a better result. Anyway, going back to the Caladragon, I wanted to see if the issues with it and with the vase had more to do with the filament than with the printer. So I printed that file again, but this time I used the green slime glitter PLA that I used for Yoda. And I think the result is better. Yes, the glitter may hide some of the imperfections, but the backs of the antlers look better, and the overall impression is that the green one is the better print. Okay, so that's it for the printed models. Now, I'll share with you some of the things I like about the Ender 5S1 and some of the things I don't like, starting with the things I like. First of all, it's pretty quiet. You can actually have a conversation near the printer when it's printing. Assembling the Ender 5S1 was easy using the paper manual that came with it, and if you prefer something more visual, there's also a good assembly and first print video on the SD card. I removed the base of the printer to have a look at the wiring, and I was happy to see ferrules on the high current wires connected to the mainboard. I was also happy to see a good electrical ground to the printer's frame. I like that Creality has included the all-metal, higher-temperature version of their Sprite Direct Drive extruder on this machine. 
The Ender 5 S1 refines the Ender 5 design a bit, and there seems to have been more thought put into the cable management on the printer than on previous versions. Overall, it has a neat appearance, and despite what looks like a big printer with a mid-range print volume, its footprint is really about the same as an Ender 3 S1. They're both about the same width when you consider the Ender 3's screen is side-mounted, and because its bed moves up and down, it actually needs less counter depth than the Ender 3, which needs extra space for its bed to move back and forth. Oh, and I like that the printer uses a full-size SD card. They're a lot easier to handle and harder to break or lose. And now, here are the things that I don't like about it. Despite the bracing on the bottom corners at the back of the frame and the bracing on the bed, the printer seems a little shaky as a result of the high acceleration values that Creality uses on it. I can see the bed vibrating while the printer is making those really fast moves. The printer seems to need a bit more cooling power on the part's cooling fan. If overhangs are too steep, the filament won't cool quickly enough and it could start to curl. Now, while I appreciate the magnetic spring steel sheet on the bed, the build surface holds onto filament much too strongly. When I restarted the base print after slicing it again with power loss recovery turned off, it was very difficult to remove the partial model from the bed. It took minutes of grabbing the model with pliers and slowly and carefully pulling it free from the build surface, and some trace amounts of the filament were left behind on it. What I ended up doing after that was using glue stick on the bed. Not to help the model stick, oh no no no, it doesn't need any help in that department. The glue stick acts as an interface layer between the filament and the print surface. That way, the filament sticks to the glue stick and the glue stick sticks to the bed, and when I remove the prints, I'm basically peeling the model off of that layer of glue stick. I think Creality should have used the build plate from the Ender 3 S1 Pro on this printer, which has a textured PEI surface on it. Prints release from that surface a lot more easily. So that's the Ender 5 S1. Is it worth the $470 pre-sale price? That's $120 more than the current on-sale price of an Ender 5 Pro. Well, it has features the Ender 5 Pro doesn't. It's got the bed probe, the touchscreen, the Sprite Pro direct drive extruder, and a beefier frame. That Sprite Pro extruder alone is almost $110, so if you were considering getting the Ender 5 Pro and you were planning to upgrade it to a direct drive extruder, the Ender 5 S1 is definitely worth considering. Thanks again to Creality for sending this over so I could show it to you. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.